El claustro románico. The cloister of Silos boasts some of the most important Romanesque architectural and sculptural treasures in existence. The spiritual renewal which the monastery of Silos enjoyed after the death of Domingo Manso in 1073, coinciding with the economic and demographic resurgence of Castile, explains the magnificence of the cloister. The work on the cloister presumably began under his successor, Fortunio, after the solemn consecration of the church in 1088. The cloister garth is laid out as an irregular quadrangle. There are 60 semicircular arches supported by paired columns. The central supports of each gallery are formed by quintuple supports, with the exception of the west side which is quadruple and with twisted columns. A wonderful collection of geometrical, vegetable, zoomorphic and human motifs decorate its 64 capitals, all skillfully sculpted, and the visitor will enjoy their extraordinarily delicate expressiveness. The Primer Maestro, or First Master, is without doubt the best recognized and most genuine of all the artists and craftsmen who worked in Silos. He produced the exceptional chapters on the east and north sides and left several touches on the west wing, as well as the extraordinary reliefs on the corner pillars on subjects relating to the death and resurrection of Christ, the descent from the cross, the entombment and the holy women at the tomb, the road to Emmaus, the incredulity of St. Thomas, the Ascension and Pentecost. Towards the end of the 12th century, other great hands concluded the work on the southwest angle with two reliefs in the late Romanesque style, the Tree of Jesse, and in the Protogothic style, the Annunciation and the Triumph of Mary. Round about 1120, and as a consequence of the expansion of the Romanesque chapel, the transept was built. This was linked to the cloister by the door of the Virgins, whose ironwork arch seems to evoke the Mozarabic origins of the abbey. Its columns, full of oriental refinement, are adorned with large capitals with images which have grotesquely twisted shapes. The lower cloister contains other works of considerable interest, such as the Virgin of Martho, or March, a Gothic statue of an unalterable solemn gravity, and the chapter house, which has not been used as such since it became a funeral chapel in 1503. Only very few remains of the traditional Benedictine room have survived to this day. The cenotaph of Santo Domingo was built in the north side. Three lions form the base of a tombstone of the 14th century containing the pontifical effigy of Abbot Perpetuo of Silos, the liberator of so many Christian prisoners in the Muslim jails. The Mudejar panelled ceiling is another of the treasures to be found in the cloister. A dreadful fire in 1384 damaged the original roof. Thanks to the efforts of Abbot Juan V and the financial contribution of some noble benefactors, it was possible to contract Mudejar builders to make the new ceiling. In the linear Gothic style and under straight and curved lined arches blending Islamic techniques with influences or elements of a Christian style, there are some 700 scenes reflecting the habits, the atmosphere and the predilections of late 14th century society. Not in vain, many of the storylines come from the exemplos and from the inexhaustible literature of the period. The cloister of Silos surprises lay people and scholars as it possesses two floors, and although it does not have the aesthetic beauty of the lower cloister, the upper floor, built in the early 13th century, is nevertheless a uniform and commendable construction. The sculpture work is concentrated in its capitals, whose iconographic elements are dominated by vegetable motifs, floral ornaments and an impressive display of real and mythological animals. 
The scenes of local customs located in the southern end remind us of the humorous burlesque lyrics of Goliardic poetry and are of outstanding originality. And the now famous cypress tree of Silos occupies a place of honour in the recent history of the monastery. It was planted by the monks in 1882 and this zealous, tireless sentinel can boast that it has been praised by poets such as Gerardo Diego. Indeed, it inspired him to write one of the most distinguished sonnets in Castilian lyrical poetry. En esto surtidor de sombra y sueño que acongojas el cielo con tu lanza, chorro que a las estrellas casi alcanza, devanado a sí mismo en loco empeño. <tose> 